All right, welcome to everyone who's just joined. I'm gonna yield the spotlight here on my end to Melissa and to Myra and to Jackie. Wave, <laughs> ladies. If your name is Melissa, Myra, or Jackie, please wave. There you go. And uh, these three ladies will be leading us on a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And I happily turn it over to you, my, Hi, my queen and love, Melissa, <laughs> and my my long lost sisters, Maida and Jackie. We were all separated at birth. We recently <laughs> discovered, and uh, we're now happily reunited. So, <laughs> please take it away, ladies. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jackie, and good morning, Myra. I'm really glad to be here in conversation with all of you. Um, so an interesting thing happened this morning. Um, Jackie and Myra and I met the other day and had a really great conversation and created a conversation to have with you today. And I cannot find my notes. And I thought, hmm, that's really interesting. And every time I went to recall what we had planned, planned on talking about, it just went, gone. And I went, okay, all right. Now what? <laughs> this is such a great lesson. So what's occurred to me is uh, just to let the spirit guide us. Um, and that really, there doesn't need to be an agenda. We just need to let the spirit flow through us to bring us to the conversation we are meant to be having right now. Or at any given moment, rather than always planning and having agendas and thinking we know it all. And so um, I love books. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised on stories. And so I wandered through the bookshelf and I found a beautiful poem and I would love to open uh, this meeting with this poem for us to reflect upon and think uh, on at, in relationship to what it, are we bringing into this, what are we birthing into this world now, each one of us soulfully birthing into the world? What is the flavor? What is the tone? What is the color of what we want to bring intentionally now into the world? Um, I hear much conversation about doing doing to do this, doing to do that, which is great. You know, let's cool the planet. Let's find a way to not uh, harm animals. We have to do these things. But behind, before we do, I think we have to reflect. And I think that this stage of us being forced into a cocoon state is one of us being asked to reflect on what now. Um, and I just want a, a little tidbit. This is an Emily Dickinson poem. She says, I am nobody, who are you? <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> okay, so this is a poem by one of my favorite poets. His name is David White, W-H-Y-T-E. He is Welsh, but he lives on Whidbey Island. What to remember when waking. In that first hardly noticed moment in which you wake coming back to this life from the other more secret, movable, and frighteningly honest world where everything began. There is a small opening into that new day which closes the moment you begin your plans. When you can plan, it is too small for you to live. What you can live wholeheartedly will make plans enough for the vitality hidden in your sleep. To be human is to become visible while carrying what is hidden as a gift to others. To remember the other world in this world is to live in your true inheritance. You are not a troubled guest on this earth. You are not an accident amidst other accidents. You were invited from another and greater night than the one from which you have just emerged. 
now looking through the slanting light of the morning window toward the mountain presence of everything that can be. What urgency calls you to your one love? What shape waits in the seed of you to grow and spread its branches against a future sky? Is it waiting in the fertile sea? in the trees beyond the house, in the life you can imagine for yourself, in the open and lovely white page on the waiting desk. <laughs> I mean, it's just so perfect, you know? <laughs> um, the other day um, I was watching what's called celebration it's a big event that happens in alaska i think it's every two years it's uh, a gathering of uh tribal um, northwest coast tribes from mainly from bc and alaska so clinket haida and simsian peoples um, and they all come in their regalia and regalia if you don't know are um their uh clan blankets so they wear button blankets and on the back it shows the moiety from which they come. So eagle, raven, wolf, bear, et cetera. And uh, so beautiful regalia and hats and uh, the Clinket people weave uh, Chilkat blankets, uh, just extraordinary. You can look those up um, if you're interested. And they sing and they dance for hours and they're dancing in the spirit and they bring their children with them. So you see these little babies dancing, you know, doing the eagle dance or killer whale. And um, so that's today, and that's what this poem of David's really touched me, is let's follow our spirits and see where it leads us without an agenda. So I just wanted to open that up <laughs> and uh, see where we go. What question for you, Melissa. Here's a good question for you. How do you distinguish especially with the common man, how do you teach them the difference between a mental concept and a spiritual, direct spiritual reality? Hmm? That's a really good question, Dharmendra. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm sure we all have different ways of doing this, Pro or, or recognizing this, and I can only speak about my own process. Um, when I'm being, I, I call them zigzag days. And a zigzag day is when I wake up and I put my plans aside. I put my agenda aside. So I wake up and I'm gonna have breakfast, I'm gonna go to my studio, I'm gonna do this. That is not a zigzag day. A zigzag day is when I decide to hit that pause button and just go with my inner feelings. And um, the way things come to me are through visual signs. So uh, I could get a color or a feeling or I'll see something outside that is a, that is a sign to me to follow that impulse or that direction. So it could be something, um, and animals speak a lot to me. So um, I'll give you a really good example of that. I was driving down the road one day and a crow flew in parallel to my car, dipped down in front of the windscreen so I could see it and flew ahead of me. And I, I took notice, because that's kind of weird. And I was like, huh, okay, that crow's got a message for me. And he landed on a mailbox and sat there looking at me and turned his head. And in his beak, he was holding a nut. And I went, okay, that's really weird. <laughs> and um, so I really pondered that. And that evening, I went to a, a lecture about um, a, a lecture of Michael Mead's who is a mythologist who lives on, in our, our part of the world. And he told a story about the sacred nut, which is an Irish story. 
and it's an I think it's an oak tree that grows along the edge of a pond and every so often it's swimming in the pond are fish and the, these sacred nuts drop off the tree every so often and and sometimes they'll hit the fish a fish and and this story I don't remember all the details but the story is about receiving sacred wisdom when the nut comes to you you're receiving sacred wisdom so um that then took me on an inward journey instead of an outward journey into discovering, well, what is the sacred wisdom that I am carrying within me that I need to birth out of me? Um, I think that's the best way I could describe it right now. Um, but it, it comes more in the feeling realm rather than in a thinking realm. And the feeling realm can activate the thinking realm, but it's not the other way around. I don't start by thinking and then feel. I feel could, first that I think. Could you take me through that so I can experience it the way you do? Um, can you be able to, I don't quite understand the question. Can you take me through what you do to, to get into that spiritual space that you do for yourself? Can you share it with me in such a way that I get to experience it the way you do with you? Hmm. <laughs> really good questions. These, these are mind gymnastics. Okay. Um, no, I'm challenging your spirit. No, this is good. This is good. Well, I'll just take you through what I went through this morning. Okay. I woke up and I spent um, a good 15 minutes looking for my notebooks <laughs> because I knew this was going to happen this morning. And I'm like flipping through them all. I'm going, oh, shit. Excuse my language. Uh, where are the notes that I took when Myra and Jackie and I were to, met the other day? And I couldn't find them. Although I have all the notebooks where potentially those notes could have been. And I, I kept looking through them. So I was being stubborn. You know, I was, I had, I wanted to talk about those things. We had a great conversation. And in fact, whenever Myra and Jackie and I get together, there's just this flow. We don't pre-plan it. We get together and there's a flow that happens. And when that flow happens, it's really hard to recreate that same flow, you know, but, but there's this, I really wanted to recreate that same flow. So I'm still looking for my notes, looking for my notes. And, you know, I can hear the background people talking on block party and I'm starting to get a little more stressed out because I know now we only have 15 minutes and I just put them down and I go, well, this just isn't working. <laughs> there must be a reason. <laughs> so I put the notebooks down and I just go about my daily business. So I go make myself some hot cereal. I make a cup of tea. I go brush my teeth. And I just stopped basically looking. And I just came back to my center and I said, all you have to do is turn up and be yourself. You don't have to prove anything. You don't have to do anything, just be. And as soon as I gave myself permission to just let that go, then a thought popped into my spirit, which was just let the spirit flow through me. And so I just opened up in a way and made space for that to happen. What did that feel like? Um, I just chuckled. It made me happy. I, it tickled me. I was like, you know, I, I was laughing at myself for being so ridiculous half an hour earlier. You know? you're, an, you're an artist. How, could you describe visually the actual movement of inner or spirit or whatever it is? Could you actually just describe the visual of it while it's happening to you? Um, when it comes in and you're and yeah. you're channeling that. Um, well, f this morning what happened was I started um, thinking, I got back connected back to nature. So I started thinking about opening today with a prayer. I saw water, I saw air, I saw all the elements. It, for me, that was elemental. And it was really reconnecting with those elements and having a sense of gratitude. How do you reconnect with them? Are you immersed in that, those environments or do, do they come one at a time? Do they go into your body? Do you, do you get a vision? How do you do it? Yeah. Um, I, for me, it's uh, it, t this morning, it's every day is different, but this morning it came to me um, 
being connected directly through my voice and my thoughts with each element. So I thank the water. I thank the air. I thank the trees. I thank the birds. I listened to the bird song. I took a breath. I drank some water. So there was a, at first a prayer in a way of through connection, through recognition. And then there was the actual taking into my body, a sound, a taste, a scent, um, which was yeah. connecting physically after I connected, uh, I could say spiritually with the elements. That, yeah, I could relate to that there. I felt the spirit come in at that point. So thank you for sharing that because I needed to see where you actually, the spirit actually came into you and it was in your gratefulness, sharing your gratitude with the elements. Thank that you. seems to, yeah. to be how you opened it and started it. So that's, that's nice. Because now I feel I can connect with you uh, deeper than even the story, but with you as a being. And then I, I feel like I can stay with you now, whatever you're going to share. Because I've already, I've, I've opened up to what you've opened up to in the way you opened up to it. So in a way to just relieve, at least for me, all the mis possible misunderstandings. Now I can tune into your belly and into your heart and, and let your mind go wherever it wants and lead the discussion. But so that's nice. Thank you. Did really good with that. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Dharmendra. And, and I have to say that um, it's when I heard, I, I just remembered this, it's when I heard your voice speaking this morning that it opened it up for me. So um, I think that's really interesting because we're working with Dharmendra on this vegan synergy meditation. So there is a connection that we're all creating. We're not separate anymore. We're one. And so I voice for me can open a door and that's what happened and things you were saying I was like oh my god Darmendra is really setting the stage for what is coming through me this morning that I want to open for everyone mm. to mm. feel and and live and converse and and that's leading me us into this path of practicing gratitude because so much of our focus right now is like on how can we fix things and how can we fight the coronavirus? Or how can we build a platform? And th these are all really great things. I think we have to start by having gratitude first and reverence first and connect with the elements, connect with the air, connect with the water. These are living beings. These are not just things that we breathe in or consume or, um, <clears throat> you know that they're not products they're living beings they're life and and i think part of our solution is to reconnect with those things so that they they are we're we're one with them and the solutions will come from that reconnecting with nature that's that's really cool um i'd like to share something on that note um that you're inspiring me to do is whenever i worked with the, the elements I always put space in the middle and then had the four directions in each direction, like north north is um, earth, et cetera, and south is fire, and west is air, and east is, um, or no, west is water, and east is air. And and then what I've learned recently is it's a transmission that was that's carried by what are called tertons that are uh, knowledge holders from the Tibetan tradi tradition who passed down things either physically they found them buried from hundreds of years ago or it was mind implanted by you know conscious beings and one of the teachings has to do with the way you start is you you ask for a there it's a five-part thing where you go angel of the earth please purify my physical body angel of the water please purify my astral body angel of um angel of the air, please purify my mental body. Angel of fire, please sanctify my spirit. Angel of ether, please gather the quintessence. So that's how you start the opening. And you it take a while to do that. And you move your hands in a, and you do three breaths with each one. You wait three breaths after you say each one. And then uh, and then what you do is you bring down your, your, your uh, you, you call on the seven archangels and they resonate to each of your seven bodies. So now you're standing on the ground with your four directions and you're in the center of that in the center of ether or space where you're totally in open space. So when you call down and when you ask for the blessings of the archangels, like the archangel Safkiel, please bless my monadic body, my highest body, with your ray of luminescence. So you ask for the essential quality of each archangel to come through you. 
And um, so I just I just kind of want to add that in, and maybe I'll open it up at my next meeting uh, on thir next Thursday or whatever. But I, because you're doing such a beautiful thing with the elements, that's really just the beginning of a whole prayer that 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 opens to the totality of our being. And you go through, and, and it's a, just a simple prayer. You ask for a blessing, and it's a, a certain essence from each angel, like the next one, the Archangel Gabriel, you ask for a blessing for your atmic body, and that's quiescence. And, and so it goes on down through pearlescence and iridescence and rubescence, phosphorescence and incandescence. And it's, it's very beautiful, and there's an angel for each, you know, uh, an archangel for each. And so maybe that's something I, I'll start sharing because that, that's a beautiful way to... Um, you know, all the things I've been talking about with you guys and, and bringing meditation in the space and, and, and also blending East and West. It's not just about meditation from the East. It's also, there's some very incredibly sacred traditions from the West in the Archangel teachings and the elements are, are the elements are both East and West, but the, the Archangelic stuff in that way is, is definitely more from the West. So I think we also need to start creating a conversation between both sides, the East and the West. And um, so anyway, I don't know why, why I said all that, but I, I thought I would bring it out because I think it's time to really give the whole teaching because it's not just about the elements. We have seven bodies or seven layers, if you like, of our, I won't just say energy field because it's more than energy and it's more than consciousness even. It's also source presence. We have everything. We have everything in existence, including God. And, and that's our monadic body is, is a pure particle of what God is. And it's not something we're guaranteed. We have to work on that. We have to work on creating that connection. Um, and, and that's and then all the other bodies line up. You start with the seventh body because it organizes all the other bodies. And if you don't know anything else other than the seventh body, that's all you need. But what's happening now through the Siddha stuff and all that work is all the other bodies are being revealed. And it's time people learn about this stuff because I, I think most people don't even know about that. They don't even know we have seven bodies. And that, you know, we, we need to start to create a connection with all of them. And I think in this space, what we're doing here, this is, this is the, the time capsule through this time of crisis that we can get so much knowledge because so much energy is being released in the collective. It's up to us what we do with that energy. There's a ton of energy being released. There's so much, and unfortunately, a lot of it's having to do with suffering, but nevertheless, there's energy to organize, to, to recreate with. And that's what we have at our disposal. That's what the Great Mother is handing to us and saying, here, you can, you can use it, this if you want to. So carry on, ladies. I love, I love, 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 love you, you ladies and what you're doing. Uh, and that's really great. You brought this up, Darmendra. Thank you for that. Um, because what that's also, and I think this poem is talking about that, is we've forgotten about our connection to spirit. We've forgotten about our connection to where we came from. And uh, just as we forgot about our connection to life here on earth, to the natural world, that we're not separate from it. And so when you say about reconnecting East and West, I also want to add that we want to reconnect with this side of the veil with the other side of the veil, you know, and, and when you, you bring in these angelic realm or these higher beings, light workers, we can connect and work with them. But the thing is, we have to ask them to work with us. They won't just come and work with us. There, so we and and yesterday in your meditation with I think it was Evan who brought up how um or or might have been Lucy. Much of the information that was once kept hidden and secret is now accessible to all, and it's accessible to all for a reason. And it's very now I see why. You know, it's really timely that we we talk about these things and we educate ourselves and learn about exactly what you're talking about to help us at this time to 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 have to to create or to to participate in this transition um and when jamin was introducing us the word that came to me was today let's talk about transformation because that's what's happening to us we're going through transformation. This isn't just about the coronavirus. The coronavirus is a vehicle for us to talk about and become a transformational beings. Like, what are we transforming into? Where are we going? On, yeah, it's all yours, Jackie. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much for bringing that up. And I really, I just love having all of the, the divine masculine here present today. It's, it's beautiful. So I just want to thank you. Um, 
you know, when you were talking about that transformation, it reminded me of a meeting we had with uh, Dr. Rao earlier in the week and how he was saying that this transformation that we've been working on, where we've been meeting together, understanding that this future that we know is, is coming, we've been preparing for, and, and it's on us, it's upon us. The transformation has begun. All the preparation work that we've been doing, it has begun. And this cocooning stage that he sees that we're in, that we've been put into, you're right, is an opportunity, I guess, for us to take the energies that are now coming down, pouring down upon us, this crystalline light that's coming down on us now, this, this opportunity to evolve. This is, a, this is a chance for us, I've been working on this, to take this quantum leap in this time of, of quiet and cocooning to implement the things that we've been planning. We see things that um, the, the majority of people don't, you know, in our hearts, our pineal glands are activated in a way that we can see the duality unfolding before us. And I think we need to take this opportunity in this cocooning phase to intentionally welcome these upgrades, to intentionally and consciously invite all of the consciousness that's in ourselves, that's been dormant all this time, to just come alive and awaken and guide us and lead us. Because the answers are not just, we have to stop being so cerebral. We have to really understand that we have other senses. We have spiritual senses, just not our sentient senses. We have to pick up on what Darmendra was talking about, this enormous amount of energy that through the suffering is being released. We have the opportunity as spiritual beings, as conscious, intentional beings, to ground that energy and transmute it and create beauty in this garden. This is, this is the power we have at this moment to come together and intentionally with our actions and with our hearts to ground the suffering that's in the ethers and birth best this new world. And we can do this. We can take this quantum shift right now in this space where we're all coming together and all our hearts are coming together and we see what's really going on. This is where we, we make this web of collective intelligence and ground this energy in love. And we will create something new at the end of this because we will never go back to the way it was. And you know what? That's good with me. I'm ready. Can I speak for a little bit? So, uh, so Raven's dropped off one of your friendly nuts here. And um, the synchronicity is, is, is so fun because I just came out of an, uh, an hour with Tom Chi discussing rapid prototyping. Some of you may know who Tom is, developed Google Glass and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've got pages of notes here. And the fact that I arrived with your poem and the word plan kept coming up. You spoke about our daily plan. And so I'm just going to read off a few things because this is so fun. So first of all, we're in a phase of disrupting pattern thinking, what Tom calls productive confusion. Okay. Now, the other thing that he spoke of was our metasensory cortex and our metasensory traces and the summary of our sensibilities. And I asked the question about our evolving sense of senses. And the thing that he brought up is that um, the metabolism is more important than the plan. I'm going to repeat that. The metabolism is more important than the plan. And he talked about how important that is for prototype thinking and how to sharpen your metabolism. We need to sharpen our metabolism and tuning into our senses. And uh, so I just, wow, there you go. Throwing that into the, the cauldron here. I really love that, Mark. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, actually, if you, uh, are you into the gene keys, which Darmendra has introduced us to um, the work of, what's his name again, uh, please, Darmendra? Rudd? Uh, you mean Richard Rudd, yeah. Richard Rudd, yeah. Do you know his work, Mark, Richard Rudd's work? It's, I, it's, I'm becoming attuned to it. It's been introduced over the last few months to me through the circles, yeah. Um, well, if you, if you, um, I mean, he, he has, uh, you can put in your date of birth and your, uh, where you're born, et cetera. And, and your gene keys, uh, he'll, he'll give you the code to your gene keys, your, your gifts, um, et cetera. And when you go deeper, I bought his book. And when you go deeper into it, 
there are aspects, I'm just going to take the gift because that's the first one I focused on, you know, my life's purpose. So um, the gifts I came with. When you go deeper, it connects actually to your physiognomy. And by contemplating um, your life path and that gene key accompanying it, it actually activates things in you, which uh, make you healthier. And, and I, I would say that this conversation about metabolism is really a big one. You know, um, I don't know if any, the rest of you are having this experience, but what I'm having as an experience, it's an inner experience is I feel like I'm being changed and rearranged and I feel like I'm getting downloads. And every time that happens, I go, okay, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's real. I'm like, what's going on? And I go, Mel, just stop that. You don't need to think about it. Just go, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, and it happens regularly and I don't really know what's going on, but I'm okay with that. Um, because it's part of the plan. Um, so it's, it's also coming when I, if I was an architect and I see my body as a building, um, what is interesting about these downloads is I feel like my inner space, it's not just organs and blood and heart. It's like rooms and these downloads are going into these different parts of my architecture, which is my physiognomy. And, and so I'm not seeing my body the same way as I used to which is interesting. And it's, I can't quite put it into words because it's a new experience for me. Um, but this inner outer thing is changing and, and like this, I'm starting like to understand this, that my inner is a whole universe, <laughs> you know, but it's not separate from the outer either. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Um I can, sorry if I just, just quickly respond to that because there was one note that I didn't read which speaks to this, I believe. And that's the sense of intuition. The idea that we have two ways of, of dealing with that. One is pattern recognition. So it's just kind of cerebral thing. But then there's this other knowing without experience that we can't really define. And that's really important too. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to bring up is the word chaos, because I, again, we talked about this yesterday with Dharmendra. Dharmendra, do chime in if you want on this one. And um, we were talking about um, this floating in this chaos of this unknown where, you know, everything is kind of like, like uh, lava. You know, it's, it's flowing and it's chaotic and we don't, we're in this unknown. We don't know what the form is going to be yet. Um, and we're so used to doing and influencing. So my personal way of doing this is just staying open. I'm not really trying to, to plan it or do it. I'm trying to be with it in a way, if I could put it like that, and stay open to it, to the all possibility of it. Um, but with the intentionality of, of being part of the, the transformation that is intended from the, the greater cr or creator, um, rather than my being a human trying to do it. So it's open to creation. And, and so with that intentionality, it's, it's this, um, the words that I use a lot are harmonizing, balancing, restoring, but I don't know what that is yet. I, I don't know what that's going to look like. I just know the feeling. Right. The, since you asked, I'll, I'll jump in a little bit, but, but the essence of our communication yesterday in the meeting was the principle of accordance, because I'm giving new words to all the gene keys now, which I call life slash love slash light codes, depending on whether you're working with the shadow, the gift or the siddha. And, um, but where we're moving into in the, next, in the next code is dissolution, because once you accord with what is happening, a lot of stuff's going to dissolve, a lot of stuff's just going to go away. And then, right, that's followed by collective intelligence. So once we've been cleaned out as a collective through dissolution, it's inevitable, it's coming. The minute you hit accordance, you're in tune with what's happening, for better or worse. And it's in this case, it's all for better, although the way it's coming down is kind of heavy because of the world situation. 
not necessarily for us, even if it appears scary. We stay, we stay in, in touch with our center, our essence, and we keep moving forward because we're the new future that's coming. We're that Zorba, the Buddha. We're the Zorba part that's being added to the Buddha, which makes it so we can do this collective work instead of just be Buddhas on the hill and all special. But then after that dissolution, we're going to come into collective intelligence. That's the one after it. So that's, <clears throat> that's, so and just pay attention in a couple of weeks where this collective intelligence thing is going to start. And I've just, for some reason, it's, it just happened. I caught the moment. When Anne and in the VCI meetings, um, I guess it was five or six weeks ago, she reached that entropy point and said, I give up. I don't know what to do. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how to do this because it's something new. And I said, boom, that's it. Creation right there. That's the first life code. Yeah. And so I started tracking it weekly now. And it's amazing how, how, it's, how it's so in, in, in tune with that. I just happen to be lucky enough to catch the moment. If you can catch the moment, you can get the intervals. But we're moving at a really fast pace. Yeah. So it's like stuff like that used to take centuries or years. Or We're going through it by the week now. That's how fast yeah. things are accelerating. And I, I'll just throw that in. Yeah. No, thank you so much, Darmendra. That was really so beautifully put. And um, I just want to come to my art table with all of you. And, where, and, and I think it's a really good process to help give you all a picture of this process. So um, now when I go to my studio and I'm standing in front of my table and I just let go and I just bring out my tools and what I, I know to, how to use and I just start. But instead of trying to control the result or control with my mind what I want to create, I'm just doing. It, it's almost like what children do. And it's in that process of doing that I'm discovering a whole new language with what I've always done. So I didn't even really have to change the tools or even the imagery. It's just the way it's being rearranged. And in a way, that's such a great metaphor for ourselves because we're still in body. You know, we still have eyes and nose and ears, but we're being rearranged. You know, and, and so these, this rearrangement, it's really fascinating because it's becoming something really quite extraordinary. And the intentionality behind the work now, when I look at it, so always it had love involved in the creation of it because creation is love making, as Myra would tell us as well, <laughs> uh, it is, is that the work has entered the realm of reverence and prayer. So when I look at it now, I go, oh my goodness, this is a prayer for Mother Earth. Now, I didn't set that as my intention. It just happened through the act of the creating of it, of the letting go of my trying to make it something and allow it to rearrange itself in this mysterious process. You know, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Melissa, because I've been noticing the same thing in this transition. To me, it's such a sacred time because it is an opportunity for humanity to start remembering that we're just cyclical and we've been here before. You know, humanity has been here before where we've gone off track. We've separated ourselves from spirit. We've forgotten who we are and we've stuck in into our lower chakras of fear and pain and suffering. And we've just recreated these cycles and one of the most important lessons i've learned in life itself is what am i afraid of i'm afraid of experiencing something i've already survived it's the fear of fear that drives a lot of our behaviors because if we look back at the things that we've already gone through and that frighten us so much we fear the feeling of going through it instead of realizing that we should be celebrating the resilience that got us through it. And I think that that's what we need to be right now as a community is to understand that we've been through this as humanity and not to be fearful of it, but to be empowered that now we come with, a, with more wisdom, with more resources, with more consciousness, with more light to get through this, this time intentionally inviting the future that we want. And 
I've been sitting in, in my meditation during this time where we just did the equinox and we have the super full moon and the second grade of Aquarius. I mean, light is just an information and upgrades are just cascading over us right now. And I can feel the difference in my body. I'm conscious about it. I'm thinking, okay, I'm feeling a little bit of stress right now. Am I picking up on what's going on or is this me? And to sit with that and to listen because our bodies are so wise. Everything we need is right here. Our bodies are so wise. And if we just sit and listen, our bodies will communicate to us and we can start distinguishing between our voice and the voice that we're receiving. And that will guide our action. When we can separate and say, no, I'm okay. I'm good. I have everything what I need right here. I love myself. I'm in love with myself and I'm in love with whatever the universe brings to me. Because right now there's a higher order that is reorganizing, Melissa, like you said. And we are nature. We are cosmic beings. Everything that's happening outside is happening within us. So this transition and reformation, it's happening within us too. And so that's a scary feeling because we feel it inside and we don't know what that feels like. But let's take some time to trust. Like you said, like children, when you give a child Play-Doh and some crayons and ask them what are they going to draw or make, they don't know. They're just going to play and what comes out at the end comes out at the end. But they trust in their creativity. They trust in their imagination. And they're not fearful because their environment is trusting so they can go into flow and disappear. That's what we need to do for one another is to create that supportive network. We can individually tap into that, those gifts and that curiosity and that creativity from childhood and go into flow, understanding we can trust that creativity, trust that we don't need to know in the beginning. Just do what feels right, what feels like love for the greater good of all and be the best you can be and trust that what comes out at the other end is going to be love and is going to be affected to what we want to do. And then trust our community that we're here to support one another. You go in flow. I got it for right now. Okay, my turn to go in the flow. You got it right now. We're a family and this is a sacred space and a sacred time. Definitely. Um, I love to listen. <laughs> uh, I'm a very talkative person, but I love to listen also. And at this very moment of life, it's, uh, it's, it's just amazing because we can almost um, get into the inner part of the deepest within ourselves and really discover what kind of human beings we are. Are we the type of human beings that we just act reckless and we go to the store and we grab different type of fruits without washing our hands? Are we the type of neighbors that we go and knock on the door to make sure that our neighbor is doing fine? Um, it's a very interesting, um, definitely, <laughs> situation of, and it's worldwide. It's not something where you're here in the United States and you have a second option and you're like, oh, I think I'd rather go to Mexico and just wait until this whole situation ends in the United States and then I'll come back. No, it's in Mexico too. <laughs> so it's, there's no way out. There's no way out. And the only way out is going to the deepest part of inside of you. And like Jackie and, and uh, Melissa says, it's just trust, create, and co-create um, within yourselves. I am a, more of a visual person. I love to see and presence and just look at every season, almost like letting nature speak through my eyes through my ears, through my skin, through all my senses. And one of the things that I love to watch is trees. Trees, they are unbelievable. They are like human beings and they communicate with us in so many different ways. It's just a matter of standing in front of them and observing them in a mindfulness way. Um, and I'm gonna give you an example. There's a, a tree here uh, right across where I live. There's a park. And there's a tree that 
from every season, obviously it changes. It goes into the different cycles. And I was meditating on it. Yes, well, I usually go and meditate under that tree every time I have an opportunity. And I was staring at it. And right now it's completely without leaves at all. No leaves, completely naked. <laughs> and I was just contemplating it and realizing, and in a way maybe question, I, I don't try to question life or nature, but I guess in a way just observing, observing it and uh, asking, does it hurt to let every leaf fall, to let go of something that, that it grew from you, that it grew during the summer or during spring? And all of a sudden you're here naked, it's cold, it's windy. And to what I concluded yesterday as I was observing it, I realized that we are in the moment of practicing detachment in every aspect. That detachment, because from the moment that we let go of everything, our egos, um, we realize that material-wise, it only gives us temporarily satisfactions, not even happiness, it's satisfaction. Because for a lot of people, what um, a $5,000 Louis Vuitton purse, you hang it the same way than a $5 purse from Walmart. Same as a watch, uh, an expensive watch, it gives you the same time as a 99 cent watch. So material, it's not worth and you learn how to detach from that because right now it's just sitting in the closet doing absolutely nothing who are now you're trying to impress no one so from the moment that we realize that i think that's when we're ready to take that quantum jump and realizing that the only thing that matters is a healthy spiritual life, a healthy physical life, a healthy emotional life and mental life. That's all that matters. If we don't have none of that, then who are we and where are we going to? What is the path in life? So it's, it's very interesting. Yesterday I was talking with the legislator that he's really good friends with the Arizona governor. And I was telling him, why are you guys shutting down Arizona before this thing gets out of control like New York is right now? Like my heart is heavy to see the New York situation. And he said to me that it would be really hard to shut down Arizona because economic wise. And I am sitting here just reading his answers and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's still something for them, for those political people, the ones that are rich and that have money. And there's a lot of work that they still have to do. And sadly, they are gonna be ready for that quantum jump until they see this situation hitting them directly. Not that I'm wishing him absolutely nothing bad. No, that's not the case. But that's the only way. Life always teaches us in, um, sometimes in the most beautiful, but at the same way, more difficult way. <laughs> so it's, a, it's an amazing, it's an, ama an amazing experience what humankind is as of now living. And you know, I wanted to add in that, you know, the masks are off, right? I mean, so much of what we we felt and we've known and we've kind of concluded I mean, it's so blatantly obviously out there now. I mean, I, this is this is the we can see the agenda that's going on, right? And we need to understand that we have the power to see that and to change within ourselves because the power within us to show the truth is more powerful than any illusion that can be put on humanity. We have to wake up and we have to show and shine the light of truth and reverence for life 
to our most ability, to the highest of our ability and shine that light because that reflection is going to shine so much light on all the shadow that's now coming out. We have that power. Our frequency is that high and they will resonate. They will meet us where we are. And so we have that obligation to work on ourselves and do that. We have to remember that we are, no matter who we are, where we come from, we are always the great, we're greater than the worst thing we've ever done. Every moment of our day, we reinvent ourselves. Right now, who I was five seconds ago is dead, gone, doesn't exist. I'm here with you right now. Everyone right now in this moment gets an opportunity to reinvent themselves, to trust, to believe, to understand that we're dynamic. We are the Marvel you know, characters. And I was sitting in my meditation, and we're a Marvel family, and you know, I had this, this vision of, um, my kids will kill me. Quicksilver, I believe has the character's name is, and he just, he just moves through like just this quantum speed. And I had this visual of that's who we are. Like as the world is pausing and the world is slowing down at a crawl, we have the ability right now as these quantum beings to go out and start manipulating that system, start putting things in place so that when the world picks up, We've already redirected things. We've put our stamp in. It will never return to the way it was before because we have the intention and the knowledge and the wisdom. We're awake enough. And everyone is awake enough to do something. Everyone, if they trust themselves, they're awake enough to do anything. And be courageous in every moment to trust yourself, to say, I can do this. I can be bigger. I'm greater than any story that's been put on me. And see what's going on right here. And trust that as spiritual beings, this divine order that's going on right now is for the best. It's for the best of us. So be the best people we can be in our lives and share, share our gifts and our talents and ground ourselves in this moment. Um, I think the childlike part of us is screaming to come out. That creativity, that exploration, that trust. I think this is where I'm feeling so much in tune with what's going on and so much connected with what's going on here. And I feel the fear that's coming up. I feel this. And so it does break my heart. I have, I'm from New York. I have lots of family back in New York and, and it is a terrifying time. So it's hard to have these conversations because it almost feels sometimes like we're being insensitive because I want to celebrate life. I slept in my backyard three nights in a row because my intuition was telling me connect with nature. Yeah, I've got a nice cozy bed upstairs, but there's homeless people in the park that don't have anyone taking care of them. I needed to go and I need to reconnect with my humanity. I need to feel myself surrounded by nature. I needed to feel what it was like to sleep when it's drizzling and it's cold. I needed to feel that as a human being to reconnect and get out of my head and stop being so intellectual and remember that everything I have is right here and to trust that. Thank you, Jackie. Wow. Um, just going back to what Myra was saying, um, one of the things I'm seeing, hi Charles, welcome, um, is that our lifestyles are being disrupted across the globe or around the globe. So um, it really doesn't matter whether you're Mexican in Mexico and you go to the market and you eat fresh fruit or you know you live in New York City and you take the subway. Everybody's lifestyle is being disrupted. And I think that's really interesting that we're all being put on pause and our lifestyles are being disrupted and we're being called to something else something different and um then just traveling to your words uh jackie um what's coming to me more and more every day is um really i feel like we are as guy mcpherson would have would say we are in hospice because we don't really know what the result of all this is going to be and so when you talk about laying outside in nature, for me, that's the state of hospice. It's the state of just being fully present in the moment and connecting with what your spirit needs right now, right here, right now. As if there is no other moment after that one, this one moment, this present moment. And um, I think that's a really healthy thing. 
and it's essential now for us to come back into this place of mindfulness in the present moment. Would anyone else like to add anything to this wonderful conversation? Hey, Brett. Hello. Uh, I'll just say uh, it's been a pleasure to listen. I'm a little bit in and out, so I, I haven't honestly been able to hear every single part of everything, but it's been a real pleasure to kind of just listen like a – it's not like a Zoom call where I'm just talking all the time or interacting. It's like just listening to, like, intelligence and feelings and, and descriptions and poetry. So. I'm just checking in to say I'm here, I'm listening, and I appreciate everything that's being shared. Thank you for uh, showing up, everyone, and sharing your your happiness and your insights. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Brett. That's awesome. Um, I think there is, you know, something really important about just being present. You know, we don't always have to speak, you know, just our spirit being present. Um, and then um, I just want to share a little funny story. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, because as humans, we always go around like arranging stuff, right? Like we clean the garden, we arrange furniture, we do all this stuff. And on our, it's kind of a gray day today and it's been raining on and off. So there are little puddles of water. And we have this one plastic sort of like little, it's, it's like a stool or a table. Um, that collects water. It's kind of, the plastic's kind of sunk a little bit and made like a little bowl, if you like. And so whenever it rains, it collects water. And whenever I see that, I always go and dump it off. That's my silly human nature, you know, I'm trying to tidy up. Well, while I was sitting here listening, I think it was to you, Jackie, I looked outside and the chipmunk, he's doing it right now, look, Damon. The mm. chipmunks and the squirrels, that's their watering trough. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I will never dump that again. You know, it's like, if we can take time to look around us, you know, then we can stop being busy and <laughs> stop rearranging things. <laughs> Okay, I came outside because I am going to show um, everybody here a beautiful tree that I have right in front of my uh, window. And because I would like to listen from everybody that is here, I would like to know what does this tree, when you stare at it, and let me just point it over there. What does that tree shows you? What does that tree communicates to every one of you? I'm going to get a little closer. There we go. Grace. Yeah, I would say grace as well. And I would add abundance. Oh, yeah. Because it started yeah. from one little seed and now it's yeah. just like, woo! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Centering community. Oh, nice. I'm getting like, I am here. It's just like in the middle of that street and all that. It's like, <laughs> like, I'm here. It really breathes light. In a otherwise unnatural space, totally breathes life into it. Also, like your biatches, I'm here. Like, what are you gonna do about it? And my friends are coming. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I, I it's would, a bridge uh, and a portal also. I would suggest center, center of community. Nice. And my book just fell open. I'm going to read this poem, which is quite synchronistic with um, this tree image, Myra, that you're sharing with us. It's a poem by uh, Rainer Mari Maria Rilke. My life is not the steeply sloping hour in which you see me hurrying. Much stands behind me. I stand before it like a tree. I am only one of many mouths, and at that, the one that will be still the soonest. I am the rest between two notes, which are somehow always in discord, because death's note wants to climb over, but in the dark interval, reconciled, they stay there trembling. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, that also brings the uh, stillness portal. You know, when I first saw the tree, the first thing I thought of was abundance. And then it was just, I am. Just I am. Yes, definitely. It is amazing as we look at the trees and it almost speaks for how we feel at that moment. So I'm guessing a lot of you guys feel abundance, <laughs> even in this difficult time. Yeah, um, I wanted to also come back yeah. to what Mark was saying about stillness. Um, I think that's really important. That, and what I love about this, these two hours we share in this impulse of the divine feminine, which runs through all of us, is that we can practice together stillness. It doesn't mean that the space is empty because we're not speaking with our mouths. And when I spent all those years with the Haida, they said, you white people, you talk too much. They said, we only use our mouths for eating and singing. Yaha hey, yaha hey, yaha hey, ah ah ha ha, yaha hey, yaha hey, yaha hey, yaha hey, ah ah ha ha, yaha hey, yaha hey. That is thanking Mother Earth for all that she provides us with, <laughs> and much more. <laughs> and that holding silence really also like I feel the fullness of this moment with all of you. It's like, I feel so connected with each one of you. I don't, you know, that we don't have to know each other. We, we are each other. You know, there's just this one family part being together. Totally. And I want to acknowledge Nand and family. Yeah. And and I'd love to we'd love to hear from you all. Nand, where are you dialing in from? And you're on your microphone's on mute. Here, I'm going to unmute you, Nand. Okay, I've... in India, India. What what part? What part? Delhi, Delhi. Wow, wow, right in the heart Delhi. of Delhi. Yeah, capital Delhi. Love it. See? You know, I've been on dozens of video conferences with colleagues and friends in India, but yeah. always adults. And so I really thank you for bringing your children. And I want to okay, say- thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your views, opinion. And we are locked down. You know, we are locked down. Yeah, we are too. 21, oh, 21 days. 21 days. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
and you also there? Yep. Yep. We're you on guys. Platform. Yep. How long? For how long? Indefinite. Indefinite. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what? Uh, what you doing now in uh, that lockdown at home? Uh -huh. We're doing a lot of this. So for example, this. <laughs> oh, great, great. We are making one family. Right. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. We're all in one big <laughs> living room together. This is room living, 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 living with. Talk to my kid. Talk to my kid. Hi. Hello. Hello. What, Hello. Are, what are your names? My name is Tanya. Tanya. My name is Sia. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah, so so we're doing a lot of this. So for example, this meeting is going for 24 hours straight, nonstop. Okay. Yes, we started four hours ago and we have another 20 hours to go. So what we're doing, and we call we call this a block party. So, so here in the United States, let's say there's a neighborhood, a street in a city like Delhi, but in the United States, where we wanna bring the whole neighborhood together, right? So we shut down the ends of the street, put out tables and food and music and everything in the middle of the street, no more cars, and we just all hang out and dance and talk and eat and play games and everything. So we're now doing this online, right here on the video conference. This is the block party. Mm -hmm. A 24, Yay! yeah, a 24 <laughs> hour <laughs> block party. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. great. Yeah. You can dance, you yeah. can sing, you can eat pistachos. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys know any songs that you guys would like to share with us, you guys are more free to sing and we'll sing along. Okay. Okay, I can join you. What is uh, a song that you usually sing? You sing and I will join you. <laughs> I'm not good at singing. I know that in <laughs> India, you guys sing a lot of kirtan music and a lot of mantras. So maybe you guys can share something like that with us. Okay, both of you can sing. You can. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear your country music. Okay, Melissa's going to get a drum and sing some items. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to sing the beginning of my favorite Spanish love song. Me pongo a pintarte y no lo consigo. Después de estudiarte lentamente terminó pensando que faltan sobre mi paleta colores intensos que reflejen tu rara belleza. No puedo captar tu sonrisa, plasmar tu mirada, porque poco a poco solo pienso en ti, solo pienso en ti, solo pienso en ti, solo pienso en ti. Juicy. It's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And what a beautiful way to connect that we sing our songs from our different cultures, right? Okay. Yes. Oh, all right. Here's, here's Melissa with the okay. drum and a song. Show them the drum. 
This is a drum. Drum leg, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, okay. <laughs> this is not from my culture. This is from the Haida people, and they are Native American from Alaska. I'm adopted to the Haida, so I can sing this song. I have permission to sing this song. This is a canoe song, and for 14 years, I carved canoes with the Haida out of cedar trees. <laughs> And they took three years to build a canoe. We chopped them with axes and adzes. Sometime I'll share with all of you a photo of one of the canoes. And this is one of the canoe songs that they sing when they're out paddling in the ocean. And uh, it helps to give them a beat and a rhythm. And you have a person at the back of the canoe with a And then all of them will sing back to the, the caller as they stroke. Alima we maya. Alima we maya. We may we maya. Alima we maya. Alima. I love singing. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> Jackie, your turn. <laughs> well, very nice. Oh, we will shut down the internet if I if I sing. So we'll sing. <laughs> oh, I love to sing along, but I will not leave. <laughs> But I love how you celebrate um, the artistic expression, how important it is during this time. It's so important that vibration, because we're all just vibration, energy, and matter. So to incorporate that with that intention and that love and so much fun, thank you for bringing that out. I love it. <laughs> hey, Mia, thank you. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so we're... Um, we're just bringing people together from all over the world. I think we've had people from close to 20 countries already on the block party. Um, so feel free to invite all your friends. Everyone is welcome here. Everyone, without exception. And, um, you know, my, my father used to say when we'd be sitting at a round table, right? And... <laughs> My, my, at my dad's house, you know, different friends would come over and visit and whatnot to eat or drink or whatever. And whenever we'd be sitting at the round table and more people would come, another person would come. My father would always say, there's always room for one more. So please mm -hmm. feel free to invite all your friends, your relatives, this is how, for me, this is how we're going to bring humanity together, how we're going to bring all the people of the world together, young and old, men and women, right? People of all different yeah, backgrounds. Yeah, and I think also there's something really healthy about this sharing of stories and poetry and song, you know, that, that really connects us. Um, in this beautiful soulful way where we can share stories, you know, people used to share stories and I don't know about all of you, but it's, we used to sing all the time. Song was important and, and that somehow was, was removed from like schools and, and from children's lives, you know, storytelling and, and singing songs. 
Um, and I'm going to read lots of poetry today. So I'm going to read another one of David White's poets. I think this is really great because I think we're opening our eyes. And this one is called The Opening of Eyes. <clears throat> the day I saw beneath dark clouds the passing light over the water and I heard the voice of the world speak out. I knew then, as I had before, life is no passing memory of what has been nor the remaining pages in a great book waiting to be read. It is the opening of eyes long closed. It is the vision of far off things seen for the silence they hold. It is the heart after years of secret conversing, speaking out loud in the clear air. It is Moses in the desert falling to his knees before the lit bush. It is the man throwing away his shoes as if to enter heaven and finding himself astonished, open at last, fallen in love with solid ground. And that's really, I think, where we're, we are again falling in love again with solid ground. And, and I, I don't remember the poet, but there is this one, um, one saying, uh, this phrase from a poem that says, kick off your shoes for you are standing upon holy ground. And this is that reconnecting with the solid ground, you know, that the sacredness of, of the earth. Charles, you want to- Can I share? Yeah, please. Yeah, thank, thank you. And then, and wow, you know, <laughs> a, a, a psychic moment here, because I um, I have a oh sorry, there's a tram going by um I'm out on the street here in Zurich, um, but I have a poem to share. It's it's quite a short one, and it's from Sun Ra. Some of you might know about Sun Ra, and I just it was the first one that I just was able to grab in some of my notes in my phone here, and uh, gee, it's this. It's uh, very much in sync with what you were just sharing. Um, so it's called, Of the Pattern of Being. I laid on earth, pressed my face to the ground, and felt the pulse of it, arose strong, strong from the magnetism of its strength, arose and walked away, with head high and shoulders proud, proud to have dreamed my dream, Proud to have pressed myself to the broad, solid earth, alive with living, alive with dreams, alive with all, attuned to the song of living, alive with all that is weaved into the pattern of being. It's by someone. <laughs> I mean, wow and double wow. <laughs> you, you can't make this stuff up, right? really. I mean, that's you, just in the moment, in the 30 seconds since you said the word ground. I mean, actually, it was before. I had already had the poem ready, and then you said wow. I was kind of waiting my turn. So anyway. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, we are really coming back into the mud of our beings. And um, I grew up on a Greek island, and um, one of my favorite poets, Odysseus Elitis, wrote a poem, I don't know it all by heart, but um, it, it's called Genesis. And it starts out by saying, when lips pressed in clay breathe um, out being, you know, there's this thing of us being, we're back in the mud, you know, back in the chaos of creation, and we're, we're being re birthed out of this groundedness you know and I, I think that's that's so beautiful that you know that stirringness that stirring in our souls again you know to kick off our shoes stand on the ground again let the rain get us wet yeah um nan nan wants to speak yeah yeah go ahead nan And um, Nand, uh, can you hear me okay? Nand? Okay, good, good. Yeah, um, I had to mute you because we were getting some background noise before. 
Can you mute and unmute yourself? You have, um, there's a there's a button that sh looks like a microphone. It's a toggle. You can just tap it to mute and unmute. And while we're do you want to just unmute? Yeah, no, no. He's unmuted. Oh, okay. He's unmuted oh, yeah. now. Yeah. And welcome, Lauren. Great to see you, Lauren. Thank you for Hi, Lauren. tuning in, even though you're you're busy there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. All righty. Good, good, good. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I, I just have this experience. I was starting to articulate it yesterday with Darmendra's meditation meeting um, of that it's like, whereas before I felt like I was on somewhat solid ground and I thought I knew where I was going and I was marching off in a specific direction with a plan, right? And <laughs> and now I feel like all of us to get like I and all of us are all falling in a waterfall where we don't know where bottom is and um we know that if we just sit back and just sit back and do nothing and just keep falling, it could be really, really bad. But we also have the ability to connect with each other and hold hands. And so this visual came to me yesterday that imagine that we all hold hands and we all connect as one huge human family, not just human family, but all of our brother and sister species as well. And we all hold hands as one big web of life. And we create sort of like a hybrid between a parachute and a paraglide, and we just start gliding through the mist of the waterfall to that beautiful valley, that be more beautiful world our hearts know is possible, right? And so, you know, we have the option to just free fall and just sit back and watch the television and wait for orders and watch and wait and see what happens next. Or we can all hold hands and co-create our journey from here, mm -hmm. our journey forward from mm -hmm. here. Anyway, just wanted to throw yeah. that in. And Nand, please, please wave if you want to talk, Nand, and I will mm -hmm. unmute you so we can hear you. Just wave like that and I'll unmute you, no problem, um, whenever you want. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to come back to this conversation about darkness and the night and, um, you know, it's, it's occurring to me that we've been um, cultivated, if I could say, to believe that sleep is a waste of time. You know, we got so busy and that darkness um, is, is something to be afraid of. And, um, and yet darkness and sleep are primal for us and are essential for us. This kind of going within into this dark space to kind of um, awaken within us uh, something absolutely essential. Um, so I'm gonna share another poem about that, which is again, Raina Maria Rilke. It's called You Darkness. You darkness from which I come I love you more than all the fires that fence out the world, for the fire makes a circle for everyone so that no one sees you anymore. But darkness holds it all, the shape and the flame, the animal and myself, how it holds them, all powers, all sight. And it is possible, its great strength is breaking into my body, I have faith in the night.
<laughs> it's so great. So I'm, I'm just going to, um, I mean, I love this. This reminds me of when I was in kindergarten and we would have story time or something. And then after that, we'd get nap time. So I just feel like we're all reposing. You know, it's like this sort of essential thing of, again, getting unbusy and just sort of, you know, that just taking a moment just to be again. You know, and thinking about what you were saying about like the darkness and that's that's such a third dimensional concept of like all that's where all potentiality lies. It's in the void. It, it, it's in the like the darkness. It's it's in what we can't see, where everything manifests. It's where we go in and we we grab that potential and we actualize it. It's the feminine. It's the feminine, it's within the womb when we don't know, when we are just creating and evolving. And it's the fact that we're so afraid of the darkness of the unknown, it just shows how intellectual we are, how logical. There's so much, there's so much to be excited about in the darkness. There's so much excited to be about because that's where our power lies. We can go in there and we can extract energy and filter it through our experiences, filter it through. We can go in and tap into all source potential possibilities and download it through our experiences, through our love, through our wisdom. And then we can see the world through that pineal gland, through that opening to say, what did I just download? What inspiration did I just get? And how do I go and how do I actualize that through the filter of my life and my experiences, my lessons and my growth? So everything lies in the potentiality of, in the nothingness. That's where all of it is. Dark matter, dark energy makes up the majority of our entire existence in the universe. That's where we all come from. And I think the fact that we're conditioned to be so afraid of the unknown, it starts in childhood. It starts in, you know, in, in school when we're told not creative thinking, when we're told not to think for ourselves. And we just wrote and just do and are creators for someone else's imagination. And for so many of us to be disconnected from imagination and creativity, it shows that fear of the darkness, of the unknowing. And I think this is our time. Like I was telling my children, this is our opportunity to be Anne Frank. This is our opportunity to be in this time to document truth. You know, we can prevent revisionist history from happening again, that cycle from happening again, because it will be the victors of this that are going to rewrite this history and we as quantum beings have the opportunity to set the record straight in this collective intelligence to all as activists and as artists to see the truth as we see it and as we know it and leave our stamp here this is our time to go into that void and say just show me what i have to offer show me what i have to give because this will not be forgotten this is the time to stop this cycle and create the new so that's kind of how I see this time of sitting still and going within and, and remembering my divine feminine is to go within who am I and as a whole being. What can I contribute? What have I learned in my life? What is showing up here for me right now that I have grown, that I can share, that I can reflect? What voice can I contribute to the whole? Because everything we contribute is in itself manifesting this world that we're creating. There are, what we when we use our voice with intention and purpose that vibration is contributing to the whole and literally manifesting you know we are just animated earth we get to pick and choose the world and create it as we are coming from that void and that darkness and that inspiration so we could just be courageous enough to trust that every human being is in itself love we are vitality we all want to be the best we can be if we can be courageous enough to explore that darkness and pull down with trust and in love what can i bring into this world in this time and space right now through the love i have within me through everything that i've gone through what have i learned show me how to contribute and be of service in this time 
That's, I think, the courageousness of going into the darkness, is to get out of our heads and go deep within our hearts. Preach. Yeah, really nice, Jackie. Yeah, beautiful, Jackie. Um, yeah, it's so interesting. You know, we carry this primal fear still from the days, ancient days when, you know, we had to face saber-toothed tigers and whatever else was out there, you know. Um, but I'm just going to read this because this so resonates with me. It says, our evolutionary bodies remember the big cats and the growling creatures with better eyes than ours and bigger, sharper teeth. But Rilke asks us to reclaim the universe of the night from those old fears and to join conversation with the not yet brought to light and make a friend of the unknown, <laughs> which I really love, you know, because because that's the state we're in right now. We're we are having to make friends with the unknown, you know, in the darkness of our souls of having to go inside now, inside our caves into the unknown and and kind of waiting yeah charles um this is beautiful and i, I have another offering very short from samra <laughs> um lauren might laugh she came on just after i had the other similar poem um this is not a poem exactly well maybe yeah actually i you decide okay the synchroni synchronization of the shadows to the authorized reality is a, is a key to the reasonable reality of the state of the world. The disconnection of the shadows from the so-called authorized reality and the application of the new potential through resynchronization of the shadow to the unauthorized mind image of the cosmic idea is a transformation of the shadow into the living cosmic multi-self this is the key to the reasonable reality of the state of the cosmos. At sunset here in Zurich. <laughs> Beautiful. Sandra, check. Perfect, right on time. <laughs> <laughs> As the sun is setting. It's, it's really wonderful seeing everybody's different locations. You know? snippets of Zurich. That is a beautiful place. Too. Oh, thank you. It is. Uh, just, just quickly, I, I was appreciating the, the, the kind of juxtaposition and resonance between Rilke and Sun Ra. That's pretty fascinating. So thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, how unexpected. Yeah, but then these things, as you say, synchronistic. Yeah, Myra, sorry, you were saying something? No, I was just telling Charles that that's a very beautiful sunset sunrise i don't know where we're in the what part of the world are you in oh i'm in zurich switzerland sorry yeah there's the sun is here i'm gonna go back i was just um so this is the uh, the uh eth the technical institute um here in zurich and that over there is the university of zurich but there's a kind of a terrace that i was just uh just coming away from and there's kind of a very nice panorama of the city okay. It is amazing. It's speechless. I love sunsets. <laughs> yeah. I have to jump in at this point. My father worked at ETH in the Well, that's right. Okay. okay. So I got I got one up from that. I mean, not no, I, I sorry. Second second to your father, Jamin. <laughs> so, um uh this um so we have this green building here and the the little part at the end that kind of sticks out and there's that corner there. You can maybe tell what I mean. Just just under the crane. There's a crane and then there's a little corner where the, there's like a little elbow of the building. In the top corner there, I don't know which or maybe both of those windows, was Albert Einstein's office. Wow. Right wow. there. Wow. <laughs> so, anyway. I, I think that was right next to my dad's office. But anyway, back, back to you, Charles. There you go. <laughs> well, glad to be a little tour guide here. I, I had to get out of my cave to my laboratory. I was catching my studio tan. And <laughs> All right, are we down with another poem? <laughs> I think we'll make this poetry hour. <laughs> this is Wordsworth, <laughs> and it, it's rather good after the sunset shot here. 
Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. The soul that rises with us, our life's star, hath had else where its setting, and cometh from afar, not in entire forgetfulness, and not in utter nakedness. But trailing clouds of glory do we come from God who is our home. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close upon the growing boy. But he beholds the light, and whence it flows, he sees it in his joy. The youth, who daily farther from the east must travel, still is nature's priest, and by the vision splendid, is on his way attended. At length the man perceives it die away and fade into the light of common day. And I love that poem for kind of summarizing, you know, the, the, the end of this two hour segment, because really um, that was his reflections on his childhood. And in a way we're leaving our childhood, you know, as humanity, we're dying away to an aspect of ourselves and birthing into a new aspect of self. So, um, Silesh talks about transformation from the caterpill caterpillar stage into the cocoon now, and then we'll become butterflies and come out of this cocoon. And that poem is, it really talks about that, you know, this sort of sunset on this period of, of our humanity at an, of a certain age of our humanity and coming into a deeper fullness of, of ourselves and, uh, and our connection to the world. It's like being in this liminal space, right? Like humanity's in this, this liminal space um, where, where all the traditions, you know, always have this, this rite of passage because it's that time of that liminal space when we're transitioning into, from what we've been taught into what we know, to what we've been, what we've inherited and what are what pearls are we taking from what we've been taught and what we've inherited into the new? And what do we gracefully and lovingly leave behind? You know, without judgment, without attachments, just say lovingly, we got you got me here. These are pearls that got me right here, but they no longer serve me. And I lovingly release them and let them go and go into the new. So what can we take from the old transmute and then create with? What pearls do we take with and what do lessons do we learn and we leave behind? I think that's also the process of being in the cocoon is and being in that liminal space and involving as human beings to forget more about all of that inherited belief systems and all those, those lessons that we've learned about who we are. It's really not about becoming something, it's about remembering, remembering who we are and starting to let go of all those attachments and those ideals of who we thought we were and returning up who we were as children, re-engaging with that innocence and that trust and that power and that agency, and really going through this liminal space courageously and trustingly on the other side. I'm just seeing wow <laughs> the whole morning. It's wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, and um, remembering and coming together and working together, you know, that's the other new thing is that instead of being in isolation and working together, not just within a family, a blood family or a tribe, but as a whole collective on the planet. And um, of course, as we are experiencing lots of synchronicity today. Here's a poem called Working Together. We shape ourselves to fit this world and by the world are shaped again. The visible and the invisible working together in common cause to produce the miraculous. I am thinking of the way an intangible air passed at speed 
round a shaped wing easily holds our weight. So may we in this life trust to those elements we have yet to see or imagine and look for the true shape of our own self by forming it well to the great intangible about us. James. Oh yeah, James. James. James has his hand up. To... Go ahead, James. Thank you for saying. From that. Cork, Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I've been really enjoying the the whole conversation here, and uh, just in to the latter part there, I would like to just share and perhaps shed a little of something of my distant past, anyway, and distant. Uh, yeah, my distant past that I suppose helped shape me in a way, but. Uh, still does, but sh I'd also like to shed some of it, while at the same time sharing a little of my heritage. So if you forgive me for not putting on my camera, because I'm a little embarrassed. Like, but uh, oh, now here for Thanks for allowing me to share that. Isn't it? Beautiful, James. Thank you. Wow. Um, another wow. <laughs> and um, James, that really brought tears to my eyes. And thank you for sharing that. You know, I'm really feeling soul here, you know, sharing. We're sharing on a soul level here through poetry and song and story, which is such a beautiful way to to share soulfulness. Um, so I'm really glad we're getting back to that tradition and um, reshaping the world and transforming ourselves and, and reconnecting ourselves with each other and with the world around us through these beautiful creative um, expressions. Thank you so much. And there's something about the vibration too. I don't know if you all felt that. Like I could really feel the vibration of, of the Celtic and the land there, you know, and and I think that's another wonderful way for what, thing for us to practice is, is our native languages and and whatever art form it is that has that vibration that we can all experience now, whether we understand the language or not. Like we can really connect to to place again. So thank you so much. Thank you for all of you for sharing so much with your hearts this morning. I'd like to add. Add a little something there. Um, that was that was beautiful, James. Um, um, what you what you just shared um, was about the language. So I, I didn't understand the language, but, but I did, and and uh, and I do. And and when you were singing um, the canoe song, I also felt um, right there um, to you in the canoe, making a canoe. Um, and and it, I don't know. I just felt a connection between those songs and, and the languages and the vibrations. And, and uh, I was transported um, out of any particular place, even though coming from Cork Island, or uh, I was over in the canoe with you, or, or somewhere else. So that made some sense. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 well, I think that oh, we're, um, we how are we doing? We, oh, we've got another 15 minutes. <laughs> and in 15 minutes at the top of the hour, we will be joined by Dr. Silas Rao, who will lead us on a two-hour exploration uh, into the spiritual, uh, the, oh, the spiritual aspects of healing the planet. 
and how not to go extinct. So anyway, but that's in 15 minutes. We got 15 minutes more of this beautiful segment. Um, 15 more minutes before we go extinct? Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you speak German or do you speak uh, French or? Who, what? me over here? Yeah. I'm American and. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I've been here almost 10 years ago. Oh, okay. I understand a bit of German. I'm in the Swiss German world. I can do a couple of one language conversations. Having immersed myself in English, everything. Charlie, you're, you're, you've gotten very soft and it's cutting out a little bit. So maybe if. Oh, sorry. I'm, well, let's see. Maybe my mic got stuck on the other side of my. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm just babbling about it. I immersed in English language and I'm a US person residing over here. <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. I, <laughs> there, are, there are cultural stereotypes like that I fit into, but it's, it's more um, that I keep myself very busy with other things than learning German. So. But I, I, what, I speak uh, music. Sorry, <laughs> what made you move over there? What was your intentions from making that big? Ah, I followed my heart and my, my partner and uh, we have some kids and so I'm rooted here with, um, because of my family and uh, yeah, that's a quick reason. Yeah. That's just a beautiful place to be. I'm grateful to be here. Definitely. I agree. <laughs> I have a, a good friend of mine from over there and he's always sending me pictures and videos. It's a beautiful place. Well, we're hit hard by the virus, like everywhere, and um, it's different here. Like it is different everywhere. But I don't know. Where, whereabouts are you, actually? Or, I don't know. I don't know where everybody is, but I just feel for a lot of people in a lot of places now. Yeah. I wanted to uh, mention the poet and artist William Blake. Um, I don't know if. You have all heard of William Blake. Um, he's from England. And the interesting thing about William Blake is he pretty much did not leave his house and his garden, back garden, for the most of his life. And he was a very great visionary poet. Um, and so I think that's kind of interesting. You know, he cocooned himself into his inner sanctuary and realm and had this great vision um, which expressed, came, was expressed through poetry and, and uh, painting, art. Um, and I just found another poem, which actually is him, and that's why I'm mentioning him. Um, and it's called The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Then I asked, does a firm persuasion that a thing is so make it so? He replied, all poets believe that it does. And in ages of imagination, this firm persuasion removed mountains. But many are not capable of a firm persuasion of anything. I really like that poem because here we are, all of us together, with a firm persuasion <laughs> around collective intelligence, around uh, transformation, uh, reimagining or reforestation of the imagination. I love this phrase, reforestation of our imaginations. Um, and uh, sitting in our, our cocoons or our bubbles, reimagining um, and dwelling courageously in this unknown and yet with a firm persuasion. <laughs> Beautiful. It reminds me of that tune, Crystal Blue Persuasion. <laughs> 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 Tommy James and the Shondells. Yeah, mm. <laughs> that's a great song. <laughs> Can you pull it up? 
crystal blue persuasion. All right, good. <laughs> Would you like me to? Yeah, yeah, that'd okay. be a good one to uh, end on. Bear with me while I pull it up. Mm hmm. Okay, one moment as we get through the mandatory ads. Okay, and now I'm going to screen share because it's a it's actually a video. So bear with me as I screen share and share computer sound. <laughs> All right, now everybody get up and let's dance. <laughs> All right. Here goes. Look over yonder. What do you see? The sun is rising, most definitely, a new day is coming, ooh, ooh. people are changing.
note. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Wow. laughs> Heavy rotation over here. Yes, I love that song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I loved it. What is so incredible is that so much spirit was working through so many of the musicians in the 60s. Like those messages were for today, you know? Mm. And they were just so far ahead. Because that message is so perfect for right here, right now. And how ironic, what's the last city they show us is New York, which is like the epicenter of the coronavirus right now. Pretty wild. Yep. All righty. Well, <laughs> I want to welcome our very Yay! special guest, Dr. <laughs> Silas Rao, who just joined us. And um, we've got a couple minutes, four minutes to be precise, until the top of, top of the hour. Does anyone like need a little break or something? We could just kind of kind of chill out for a little bit if folks need to get a, some water or a snack um, before we start. Yeah, yeah that's a great do? idea. Okay, so I'm gonna stop recording for the moment. We'll start recording again at the top of the hour and we're just kind of hanging out here. Now we are still live streaming, so keep